my dad been in jail my whole life. Yeah, Your whole life. My whole life. Yeah, he got out. Um, in fact, he went in like maybe like six days after I was born. Um, he was a Navy person. We got relocated to um, to uh, Illinois. Navy. Yeah. What did he go to jail for then? He, see, that's a lot of stuff that I started learning um, over the past few years. But my dad, um, he's actually a rapist. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, it's deep. Yeah, we on boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gonna talk. Life until about like last year. Uh, when I finally discarded, you know, learning some different truths and facts about my dad. So it was just like, so, like yeah, I don't know if I'm the youngest and middle there. child. I don't know where I'm at at the, at the, <laughs> on his side anymore. So, yeah, it's just, wow. a, you know, pretty, pretty But where was your dad during, um, when y'all were growing up? My dad been in jail my whole life. Yeah. Your whole life? My whole life. Yeah, he got out. Um, in fact, he went in like maybe like six days after I was born. Um, he was a Navy person. We got relocated to um, to uh, Illinois. Navy? Yeah. What did he go to jail for then? He, see, that's a lot of stuff that I started learning um, over the past few years. But my dad, um, he's actually a rapist. Yeah. Huh? Yes. So, yeah, it's deep. Wow. It's, it's but a, he was with the Navy. Yeah. So he basically, you know, in the Navy, you know, in the military, they, they deal with their own crimes the way they deal with him at that time, you know. Um, he had some pending charges, so instead of him, you know, going to jail for it, they relocated him. But like after um, like six days of us being in Illinois, he went out to get me, you know, supposed to be getting me some Similac or whatever. And um, he never came back. And so I would kind of find out chick was out sunbathing in her yard and he made a, made a play at her. So he went in jail. Um, we relocated back to Ohio, where my mom was originally from. He got out when I was like seven, went back in like a year and a half for later the same thing. for the same thing but just on a different level um by this time he's out of the military so he got to answer the consequences to you know the real All legal right. system so he was like um out in in ohio we got this highway called 270 which is like 285 here that goes around the whole city so 275 he was dubbed as 270 rapist he went on like a spree of different stuff so yeah so his his past has really shaped my life in terms of how i um, handle people. But what I want to go yeah. back to, what, what I didn't like, and I've always, and I sort of kind of knew this with the military, it, um, you said that once they knew what was going on in this city, they'll move him, they're going to move him to another city, but you are in charge. You, you, you can go there to the other city and rape somebody again. So, because you hear about it in the military, especially for females, mm -hmm. the fact that um, you are, um, they get abused. They get yeah. raped by their sergeants, by, you know, their peers, by, you know what yeah. I mean? So, but they're not saying facilitating, but they're moving him to fresh meat, so to say. Absolutely. Um, see, he was in Florida before we was, because I was born in South Carolina. And when I say Island. him, I'm talking about yeah. a lot of uh, yeah, yeah, this people is, who are just like him. This is, this is, this was the culture. I don't know how it is now, but I know um from from his experience and my own experience like he was in florida um and then we found out that there was a you know a little case there that that's why he got transferred to south carolina and then the what where it became something that was outside of the military's hold is that um when we moved to illinois that his victim was a civilian it wasn't somebody who like lived on base or whatever mm -hmm. so um that's why he the different court you know kind of handled that situation and he had to actually do jail time behind that so right now he's doing a bid 15 to 150 he ain't getting out so, so how long you been hearing about your father being uh in uh see all my life man most of my um most of my 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 like my mom is the only one that's really been really kind of honest about it never really going into detail because i think it was a big um, a big thing for her because, you know, she had to live with some of those experiences as, a, as you know, as his wife, you know, the abandonment behind his crimes. And then when he got out, the first, you know, the first time when we were in Ohio, he tried to make a play at her. So she never really wanted to talk about it. Um, but for on his side, you know, they've always maintained his innocence, even to this day. Now that I even know the truth, like his sisters and stuff like that, it'd be like, yeah, you know, we're going to fight this thing. We're going to try to get him out. He got this parole coming up and all this other kind of stuff. Even ask me if I was speaking on his behalf. And I'm just like, nah, bro, nah, uh -uh. you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm a father of five now and uh, four of my kids are, are girls. And so I take that kind of stuff very serious, you know. And then also when I've learned of, you know, 
um, just him trying to make a play at my mom. And then I also discovered that because of his crimes, you know, I had a sister who um, eventually would be raped and killed herself. So, you know, that really shaped um, a lot of things for me, especially how I interact with women, how I approach um, people who have been in domestic situations, victims and survivors of rape and things of that nature. That's really close and dear to my heart. So, you know, it's just I, I'm I'm a forgiving person uh, and inherently, you know, I, I'm I'm a very big forgiver. But one of the people that's been hardest, my hardest to forgive has Damn. been him. Um, just simply because of that, you know what I'm saying? And it's not even that he's been absent and locked up his whole life. It's just that, you know, how can you forgive a man who was so, you know, monstrous? You know, yeah. you have to forgive. Yeah. You have to forgive yeah. not only for him but for yourself. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a daily process. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I forgive, and you know, some days I'm good with it, and um, then some days I gotta forgive again. You know, that's that's it's a repeated process, especially with him, man. Because it's like you know, I gotta look at my mom, I gotta look at my daughters, I gotta look at you know, and and being in the the realm of work that I'm in now as a pastor. Um, my ministry is really geared to the street. So there's a lot of people who deal with this type of stuff, who were brought up in these type of households, who have uncles who have uh, made plays at them, but because of the family unit, they've masked it and hid it and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it, it, that, that's why I say it makes forgiveness hard from him because it's some, some days I just have to forgive again. It's like, you know, because I look at I'm, I, my father is is their uncle. My father is their cousin. My father is their neighborhood, you know, abuser, you know. So it's just, you know, that type of thing. Well, I, I just know that um, when you talk about um, what, what your dad done and when I look down that whole path, you know, it's really a situation where you have to feel sorry for a person who goes through that because mm -hmm. the Bible say, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds mm -hmm. and casting down imaginations and every high thought that exalt every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. So you know already that these are spiritual battles. So right. it's hard to look at the person that's having the issue and not Look at the fact that God told you, he showed you in his word through mm -hmm. Peter, through Paul, through all the different patriarchs of the of the discipleship that was with him through their books mm -hmm. that this is spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. So we cannot focus on the individual. We have to focus on the spirit. Mm -hmm. So the spirit, the Bible says that Jesus said them that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. So therefore you cannot get caught up on looking at a person. He said, how can you love a God? Mm -hmm. whom you've not seen That's and right. hate your brother. That's right. Why does he say this? Because he under, you got to understand that the situation that you're looking at, is not even the problem. The spirit that you're fighting against mm -hmm. is the problem. That's right. So when you start looking at spiritual warfare, mm -hmm. That's a whole nother level. It is. And that's a whole nother devil. That's right. It's, see, the devil is a celestial being. And therefore, he's not like us. He's not terrestrial. So when you, got, when you start to look at him, you got to start to fight a spiritual battle right. in order to understand how to win. Right. So it's not your father mm -hmm. that really is the one that's the issue. It's the devil that's operating within mm -hmm. the realm of the right. lifestyle right. that he's affecting. Right. right. So that's how I deal with things. You know, I've had my ups and downs with a lot of different people. I've, I've had situations where I felt people turned their back on me or did me wrong. And, and, and I understand my mom, mom was raped in order for her to be here. And, I, you know, you, you start asking and family members starts to get upset because you start to deal with these different issues that they want to cover up. Nobody right. wants to talk about it. Just That's like right. you just right. spoke about right. Right. and everybody's hidden. Then one day my auntie gets Alzheimer's and she just tells it all. That's right. <laughs> You right, see what I'm saying? Right. And you're like, what? And she, and she starts to tell it because she can't control it anymore right, right. because it's, it has to come out. Right. What's done in the dark yeah. will truly come That's to the come light. Out. Yeah. So when I look at different things like this, I thank God that I had an opportunity to change. And if you truly change and you truly believe, then you know that whatsoever you that's bound on earth mm -hmm. shall be bound in heaven. Right. Whatsoever is loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That's right. Behold, I give to you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. 
See, these keys that you have can un unlock or lock things. Right. So therefore, you have to forgive in order to grow. Right. If you don't, then you will affect your daughters. You will affect whoever's in your life That's because right. that unforgiveness will spring out in a whole That's different right. dynamic and attack your family. That's right. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.